Hey everybody. So when I started healing humanity, one of the one of the key things that was important to me was to incorporate the healing of both or, or all of the body, mind, and the soul. And it's funny because you know, we, we work really hard at our bodies, or some of us do. We work really hard at our minds, or some of us do. Um, but we don't tend to really think about the spirit. We don't tend to, and not a lot of us, right? It's not something that's tangible. It's not something that we really believe that we can change. But that's the whole basis of this, because really, you can change it. You can change your spirit. You can um, connect with God and, and the universe, wh whatever you believe in, um, there's ways of doing that. But, but the thing is, is it has to come with a pure heart and that's where the trouble lies for a lot of us. You see, I, I went to Catholic church. I went to the Catholic, um, catechisms and all of that. But I don't feel like I learned a lot until I got older. You know, over the last probably 10 or 11 years, I've been absorbing as much information about the Bible as I could possibly get. And um, went through some really hard times. And I actually went in search of God. And it was very difficult to find remnants of it, of, of him or it or whatever you want to believe. So I started, I've been to various churches, various types of churches. Uh, I've been to a Buddhist temple. I've been to a Jewish uh, synagogue. I have been through um, some of the Hebrew texts. I have gone to Unity Church. I have gone to Catholic churches, various different Catholic churches, and various different Christian churches. Now, <laughs> you would think that God would be in all of them but he's not. There's a lot of churches that have stuck on their uh, traditions rather than being able to just allow people to be themselves and allow, um, allow their gifts to come out and to flourish, you know, amongst other people. I mean, that's what Jesus really was all about. He wanted all of us to, to go within, which he said, and to make sure that we, um, we remove man's laws from our way of serving God. You know, that's not what God wants from us. God wants us to use our gifts. God wants us to, to um, pursue love and to pursue the gifts of the Spirit because we all have that capability. And I guess the thing that really bothers me about this and, and the reason that I have Healing Humanity is because I see so much. I, I understand what's going on in the world to a certain degree. Um, things that, that probably are very difficult to explain. But I can tell you that, that really, historically, um, people that are in power right now have learned to tap in to their, their spirituality. They do have gifts that, that some of us do have not tapped into or may never tap into um, and they have learned to to set up systems and do things in a certain way that will ha will net a particular outcome whatever they've devised as, as to be their outcome that they've devised that um, that system and that setup to to make it happen 50 or 100 years down the road. That's what's happening. That's what's been happening. You are being controlled by a very small group of people. And these small group of people are very talented. They do. They have reached their gifts. Um, and that's you have access to that. And that's why I really feel very passionately about um, healing humanity because we all have that capability, but the way that the world is going, they're actually removing those capabilities from us, from our children, right? I grew up in an age, and I probably was the last age that, it, you know, in uh, being Gen X, growing up in the, you know, late 60s, 70s, uh, 80s, we, we knew what it 
was like to be outside. We knew what it was like to without technology. We knew what it was like to entertain ourselves. And what, what we're seeing now is not only children, but adults as well have fed into this massive control over our lives and it's taken over. And what happens is it keeps you so busy and it keeps your mind busy that you don't have time to actually calm down, meditate, go outside, sit uh, quietly for a while and and contemplate God, contemplate, you know, what your next moves might be, tap into your intuitions, um, and, and release your gifts, you know, work on trying to release your gifts. You know, I remember when I was a young kid, um, you know, I was, uh, one of the things that we did for entertainment was to, to guess what color the cards were, or to guess even the suits of the cards or the, the numbers on the cards, not looking at them and then just, you know, turning them over and, and learning um, about our gifts and our abilities that way. It's kind of a strange little thing, but it, you know, it, it tapped into your intuition. And we don't see that very often nowadays. A lot of our children are just um, enthralled with this digital technology and, and it's growing. We are in we're in an area and in a, in a world right now where they talk about it and people joke about it, but it's, it's actually not very funny, um, where robots are taking over and they are, we've seen job losses from it. We have seen numerous amounts of people, um, just stuck with their phones and they don't know how to live without the internet. You know, if my internet went down tonight, yeah, I would stink, uh, you know, but I'd make it, I'd be fine. I'd figure it out, you know? Um, but sadly, a lot of people don't have that. A lot of people don't know how to live in a world without all of that chaos. And that's what healing, hum healing humanity is to me, is to connect your body, mind, and spirit um, in order to move yourself forward, to tap into those gifts, to um, open your heart up to the things that truly matter in life. Um, you know, like I said, I went around to various numbers of churches. Like I lost count a long time ago. And I, I was in certain, like I was desperate. I was searching for God. Um, I was scared. I was frustrated. I was angry. And I was sad and I, I just couldn't figure it out. You know, I, everywhere I went, I was being harshly judged. I wasn't even sure why or where that was coming from. Um, I fed into the internet crap and you know, the, my feeds were just, um, bombarded with, uh, horrendous negativity and, um, you know, and, and that, obviously it affects you, right? It affected me. And I feel like being as strong as I am, if it affected me, it has got to affect other people so badly that, I mean, they may even decide to take their lives, but you know, what's really, 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 really bad about that is that it was human beings on the other end behind a keyboard that was forcing these things to happen by choice, knowing that these videos, these, this information that they were sharing on, on one person's page or, um, targeting certain individuals, that that was going to be the outcome. How disturbing is that? So when we talk about evil, we have to really look at what is evil. Evil is a destructive heart. It's a broken heart. You know, somebody said to me today, and I know that it was a dig. I know that, um, I know that she meant it as a dig to me. So I, I don't drink. I, I used to, you know, I probably for like a year or two, I would have maybe a drink a day or maybe a couple drinks on the weekend or whatever. Um, have gotten drunk before quite a bit, <laughs> but I didn't, I was never really a big drinker. And so, you know, letting go of it and not, not, um, partaking in alcohol at this point in my life, it's not really a big deal to me, you know? And she said, um, 
when she goes out and she's drinking, she's she says something about um she makes a joke that she doesn't drink because she's she's um she goes to church. And I thought, you know, that's pretty ugly. But I th- I kind of thought it was funny because by not drinking, I am able to tap into the spirit where if you are drinking or if you are following a lifestyle that is not healthy and you're not honoring your body um, as we are supposed to be, you're not able to tap into the spirit as well as you could without it. Um, So just a piece of advice. You know, I I know people love to make jokes about it, but honestly, um, by purifying your body, by uh, getting exercise by going outside by um, by not partaking in drugs and alcohol it does help your body to be able to connect to whatever is there you know like I said whatever you want to call it you know spirit universe Allah I don't know what you want to call whatever Buddha um, there's something there's something bigger and better than what we are as a whole and that I know for sure because I couldn't tell before I wasn't following my instincts I wasn't listening for God to speak to me and now um, I can't ignore it (laughs) so there's a big change in my life and those that knew me before they see it Um, you know it's it's hard hard to miss <laughs> but um you know we really have to worship in in spirit and in truth and th- i have a lot of things that i want to share with you like you know when we go to churches there's a lot of traditions that are there that don't really serve us they don't serve our our needs as a spiritual truth seeker right for example I went to a Catholic church and I asked, I I laid my heart out to one of the priests and I asked him, like, what is going on? What has happened in my life? What was that light? What was this change? What, What opened up in me that now I'm hearing and seeing and like all of these things that were never, um, were never something I, I knew before. Right. And having realizations and knowings that I never had before, um, at least not to this degree. I had maybe had some, but certainly not to this degree. Um, and I was given a prayer. I was given a prayer to say at three o'clock in the a- afternoon every day to ward off death. That bothered me a lot. It angered me to the point where I didn't ever go back to the Catholic Church. Now, I'm not saying all Catholic churches are bad. They're not. Um, You know, I'm, I guess at heart, I'm a true Catholic, but I don't buy into a system that will not answer direct pointed questions. And that's where, that's what I found throughout my entire journey for 11 years is that until I came to where I am now, I was searching for answers, trying to understand what has happened in my life, what changed, who or what was God, and you know wh- what am I supposed to do now? And um, you know, and I went to another church, and the the pastor at this church was um, extremely judgmental and was. For lack of a better uh, way of putting it, was invested financially in whether I was succeeding or not, and I don't know how to explain that. I guess maybe I'm part of an angel network or something, and and I appreciate those trying to help, but it really got ugly very quickly. Um, I was there for about a few years, and. Um, one afternoon or what actually one morning or it's early morning I came out of my house out of my gated community and I walked to my car and as I walked to my car out of the corner of my eye I see somebody standing in the shadows and I turned and I looked and it was the pastor of this church that I was attending and I won't say the church and I will never say the pastor because he did apologize however 
he is part of my story. Um, so I will share it openly and I will share it often because whatever he got himself sucked into almost took my life. Now, like I said, it was, it was a, a well-known church. Um, the pastor's not well-known, but it was a well-known church, um, well-known organization, if you will. But they're running it as a business. And so they invest in people, probably through this angel network, in hopes that um, you know they'll net a profit, which kudos to them, great. But you know what? You're a church, and you are supposed to honor your parishioners. Now, I went to that church because I was just a, simply a parishioner. I wanted to learn. I wanted to understand about God. I wanted to understand the Bible and, and dive into the Word. I didn't go there to make a dime. Didn't know that the church was invested in me. Had no idea until, and I still don't know for sure. I'm, I'm merely uh, making a guess, but this is what I encountered. And so I look to the, to the side and, and the pastor's there, but he was in a full paper white suit from head to toe. And he had something in his, in his, uh, in his right hand. Um, I don't know what it was, but I don't even want to know. <laughs> um, you know, so at, I continued to walk to my car. I said hello to him just like I would as if he was standing in a suit before me at the, at the podium. Um, I said hello to him and I continued to walk on. And of course I watched my back and he didn't move. Um, and the next time I went back to the church because I did go back because I'm that bold. I, um, I heard him, you know, in his sermon describe an apology to me in, in a roundabout way. And so, you know, I went with that. And so I continued to go back to the church and I understood that he was sorry for what he had done or what he had considered contemplating doing. But that, that was my, that was my search for God. Like I'm searching for God and all I'm finding is death and hate. Um, people telling me, oh, you should have been gone a long time ago. Well, who's to, who says that? God didn't say that. Who are you to judge whether or not I should be here or not? So there, I guess what I'm saying to you is there are a lot of churches that are stuck on tradition, are swindled into or led into by their elders sadly, into um, destructive practices. You know, investing in, in people is one thing, but if they become your parishioner, you shouldn't be investing in them financially, you know. And, and honestly, you shouldn't be investing in people anyway. We're not racehorses. We're people. I won't get into that. Um, because if it was a program that, that – that did, didn't invite all this ugliness and this backstabbing and this competition and decaying of humanity, then I'd be all for it. And probably that has happened in a lot of people's lives. But the people that have watched this take place know for certain that that is not what's happened in my case. In my case, it has been destructive. It has been demonic. It has been ugly and not good. But anyway, so Ecclesiastes um, chapter 5 verse 1, it says, guard your steps when you go to the house of God. To draw near to listen is better than to offer sacrifice to fools. For they do not know what they are doing is evil. And I think that that's key right now in our world, right? A lot of our pastors are being led by elders of the church and I'm not sure the parameters of becoming an elder quite honestly I know that there's things that they need to do um, but I don't think that all churches have the same guidelines so you really have to you really have to fill yourself 
through it. You know, if you feel like something is not right, leave. If you feel like you're being attacked, leave. If you feel threatened, leave. If you feel like the messages that you're receiving are not beneficial to your life or don't seem to follow what you are hearing in scripture, leave. Find another church. <clears throat> because right now we have been in the midst, well, we have been for decades, right? With long, long time, been in a spiritual warfare. And it's very well hidden, but it's it's bolder right now. And I don't I don't know why, but it is. And, you know, in John chapter 4, verse 23 and 24, he says, But the hour is coming, and now is here, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship him. God is spirit. And there, those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth, which is exactly what I had been looking for for, you know, 11 years. And I finally found it um you know it ha it ebbs and flows a little bit sometimes but um i really feel like i'm in the right spot i really feel like i'm where i finally need to be in order to get the answers that i've been seeking um because they have come to me which is great so and they will come to you too if you keep yourself open to spirit and tap into your instincts which is another part of what i want to talk to you about um we want to be able to follow God's traditions. We do not need to follow man's traditions, no matter what religion you are. If you enjoy the traditions, great. That's wonderful. You know what? All for it. I love some of the Catholic traditions. I actually like the, the kneeling and the standing and the, um, it, it feels more as if you're honoring God truly. Um, and some of the traditions with, uh, you know, taking the body of Christ, you know, some of the things that we do in the Catholic Church, they don't do in other churches. And so I feel like that's, some of the traditions are good, but some of them can really squash your, your desire to be involved in God's community. And that's not good. You see, you have something good in you, you have to tap into it. And so do our children, our grandchildren. They, they don't know what they're missing and maybe you don't either. And that's why I'm here to tell you, like, I, I never knew all of the things that I know now. I didn't, I never tapped into my intuition as high and as much as I am now. And I want people to be able to do that. I want you to be able to walk in spirit and to, to open your heart up to the way that God wants us to live, which is being good to one another. Essentially, that's really what it all boils down to, is to be good to one another and treat each other as if we were treating, um, you know, loving ourselves. And, and, and that's, what he's, that's what he wants. But we all s seem to want the system, this, you know, a system and, and control. Tell me what to do. Um, you know, and, and God's not really like that. You have to be patient with God as he is with you. You know, if you, what you find is we're all sinners. I'm a sinner. We're all sinners. So what you find is when you are, um, you know, walking with God, it, you have to, not only do you have to humble yourself, but you have to be patient. You have to wait for him because, you know, he, he was very patient with you through all of your sins and now you've come back um you know looking you know to have that relationship and and I know it seems funny but there truly is a relationship between yourself and the divine and the thing is, is right now God is cleaning house he's been cleaning house and I've said this a numerous amounts of other times that you know God we built the fence, right? We've been sitting on this fence, right? Of, of We got right and wrong. And we're sitting in the middle and we're sitting on this fence and we don't know which way to go, you know? It is, um, is divorce okay? We don't know. It, we, we won't make a decision. Is abortion okay? We don't know. We won't make a decision. Is, 
being, um, uh, you know, liking the same sex and, and having relations with the same sex, is that okay? We don't know. We're going to sit on the fence. We're not going to, you know, when it's in our face, we're still not going to say anything. We're not going to make those choices and decisions. We're going to allow the systems and controls to do that for us. Instead of going to the original, the original creator of our world, of our lives, of our spirit, <clears throat> And finding out what they what what is said in the text, you know, and and to make our decisions to get off that fence and make those decisions either way, either we're for it or we're against it. We want it or we don't want it. And um, you know, God is knocking those fences down. He is not allowing us to sit on those fences anymore. He he will not let us not make those choices. And we're seeing that we've been seeing it for eight years now you know we're bombarded our school systems are bombarded our government is bombarded our just everywhere workplaces uh, are bombarded with this chaotic energy that is testing us you know what will you put up with and what what won't you put up with and we fear taking a stand we fear pushing back because we've been fed for many years to be um, complacent and to go along with whatever's happening in in the the light of being politically correct right but the politically correct is not correct to God's word and so we need to we need to really dive into that we need to we need to honor God's tradition. We need to honor God's word when it comes to a lot of these these instances. And we have to follow our instinct. So how do you actually follow with a pure heart? And how do you tap in to the spirit and truth? Right? That it's not easy. I, I get it. Especially at first. You know, but Jesus in Mark um Mark seven verse Verse 6 and 7, he answered them and he said, Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Which is exactly what I was talking about, where you know, I went to all these different churches in search of God and in search of, of truth and, um, and spirit and understanding spirit. And all I found was the commandments of men and the judgment of men, right? Because you're not going to give, when somebody asks you for a, for a specific answer on a, on a specific um, situation, right? And you give them something completely off kilter and had nothing to do with the question that you were at, that you were asked that is a judgment that is something that came from from man that is not from god that is not the answer of god you know when you go to a godly person a priest specifically is what the what i'm talking about i asked him you know what was that light what what happened to me why did it change me so much? And um, when I was given a verse to ward off death at three o'clock every afternoon, which mind you, I prayed, um, but I prayed even though I was very angry with him because I knew that his answer was a man-made judgment on my life rather than giving me the truth of what he knew from his teachings. Now he was the master. He was the doctor. He was the one that I was going to for the cure to understand. And he he pushed me aside. He didn't answer me. And so I would say that if you feel like you're not getting the answers, or if you're getting, if you're asking a pointed question and you get an answer to something completely different, go somewhere else. Find another person to ask questions of. Because you're not, you're being guided by judgment um, rather than truth. 
And when you're seeking truth, you need to understand, you really need to understand what, how far man, and man is men or women, um, because God made us, um, made man, and he formed them as male and female. So when, um, you know, when you're talking with man and, and they give you an answer that doesn't feel right, um, you know, you have to, you have to tap into that intuition and know whether or not you need to absorb that or whether or not you need to let that go, you know, and sadly, a lot of people are listening to people that are just simply going on tradition rather than truth. And I'll just ask you, you know, how in touch are you with, with, um, your heart, you know, in life and in tradition, you know, for, for life and tradition, uh, transformation, you know, trying to transform your, your body, your mind and your spirit. You know, a lot of us aren't in touch with our heart and that's where, sadly, when our young adults right now were bombarded all over this country with methamphetamines, they opened their mind so they have the mind part together. They probably have the body part together because they're young, they're fit, they're moving around, most of them, um, you know, the ones that are 20, 30 years old, but they don't have the spirit. They don't have the heart. So they've transformed, but they haven't fully transformed. And they're missing that piece. And that's the part that, that I want to see healed. I want people's hearts to be healed because without it it allows that darkness it allows that those that are seeking to do evil in this world a door into your life and that never serves us not us personally not our family structure and not our communities i'll read you a couple passages here first one is from jeremiah 17 9 through 10 the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruits of his deeds. So what that means is that God is watching you at all times and... Um, if you're being deceitful, if you are being, um, you know, if you're being sick in the heart, he'll know, you know, and he's going to judge you on that. So you can, you can say whatever you want publicly, but if your heart is sick, God knows. And, and he is the judgment. He is the one that will, will pass judgment on you ultimately. In Hebrews 4, 12 through 13, it says, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of the soul and spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to to the eyes of him, whom we must give account, which is exactly what I was saying. So he's going to test your heart. He's going to see where your heart truly lies. And everything can be a test. Everybody can be used as a test. And they may not even know that they're doing it because they may be following spirit and and listening to to what God's telling them to do. And then in your life, it's something that triggers you. And you become judgmental, you become angry, you become jealous or envious. Um, and so you act out and you act out with this evil nature, which comes from a broken heart. So you have to fix that. You have to fix that connection between your mind and your heart in order to serve God, in order to serve other people. 
So right now, I won't belabor this one. Um, I have so much more I want to share with you um, but on this particular topic. But what I, I do want to do is I want to pray with you for a second. Um, and I do want to pray for the breaking off of any religious traditions that you have that are not serving your life right now. And Lord, I pray that we all embrace a pure, instinctual um, discipleship with you. And that that the people listening, that their hearts are opened to what you have to offer and that they are able to tap into the gifts that, that you have for them so they can see that that life can be so much different. That they don't have to live in jealousy and anger and frustration and um, envy that they can live in love and peace and have and tap into the gifts that you offer for all of us and that it's available to us to all of us and that they will be able to see that heaven is all around us that it's not something to attain it's not something that um we're going to just fly off into that it's that it's here it's all around us and we have that ability as spirits that when we tap into our heart and we open our heart and we honor our bodies that we are able to tap into that and work with spirit in in our lives and in others lives as well i pray that um that there's a breaking off of the transactional spirit and there's a spiritual growth within you that you're able to to work and and embrace a life of discipleship with the lord and build a family and a community around yourself and i pray that in jesus's name amen and so um anyway so i'll just leave this with you i just i hope that your heart starts to burn for more information i hope that you start to um eagerly want to know more about what the word has to offer what i'm talking about why am i so passionate about this and you know how did i go from you know just being a normal kind of 80s chick <laughs> to doing all the things that that we all did to now just diving in and and wanting to know more about the relationship that's been opened up for me and the things that i that i um like the knowings that i have and how i see the world differently how i see people differently um i want that for you as well because it's amazing so i hope there's a renewal of your faith or that you build new faith if you've never had faith before have a great night